Hi, welcome to another Arts District Boston live interview Thursday. Today we're going to be interviewing a talented portrait painter um, who works with themes of identity. And I'm just going to wait. Oh! All right, please welcome Komel. It just takes a second to load. <laughs> Hi, how's it going? Hi, thanks so much for coming. It's so great to see you. Um, it's nice to see you too. Thanks for uh, bringing me on. Cool. Okay. So um, what makes you... All right, shoot. Why don't you start by telling us a little <laughs> bit about your paintings? Yeah, so I paint... I use oil paint to kind of create my works. Um, I've been painting for about a few years now, and I really, really do enjoy making portraits. So I focus a lot on making portraits, and that's either of myself, of family, friends, and then, you know, sometimes references, but definitely, I guess, more focusing on the people um, in my life. Cool. And what makes you want to paint portraits? Why people? That's, that's a good question. Like, I know back when I just used to sketch and I wasn't really that serious with my art, I was just always captivated by faces. Um, it just meant a lot to me versus, you know, depicting landscapes or anything else. It just stood out to me a lot um, for some reason. So uh, I kind of carried that. I went from sketching it and then kind of watercolors, figuring that out and oil paint. It's like, you know, the mediums have changed, but the interest in portraits, it's just always been there. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Um, I know you have a really unique um, process when you're making a painting. You start with kind of an underdrawing and you do some mixed media on top. Um, do you want to mm -hmm. tell us about your painting process? Oh yeah, for sure. So my process, it's a combination of, well, just like a lot of artists, it's kind of seeing what works for me and then also learning from other artists. So I think I was really influenced by another oil painter, Ruth Spear. She's a modern day oil painter and how I was influenced by her, um, she does like colored graphite sketches on water canvas before kind of getting into the painting. And so I'll do that too. But um, what I'll do is if it's on wood or canvas, I'll have a layer of gesso and then a few other layers of gesso and acrylic. And then I'll go ahead with cold erase pencils. It'll usually just be one color that I'll choose and I'll make like a really detailed uh, sketch. I'll usually make some kind of grid with it. Um, yeah, I'll lock it in place. Beautiful. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, you're good. Thank you. <laughs> and then I'll lock um, that sketch in place with a matte fixative spray so that it doesn't kind of, um, the colors don't mix with the paint, right? And then after that, I'll usually, I'll usually do one layer of oil paint with no mediums. And if I need to, I'll sometimes do a second layer where I just like make the shadows darker and the highlights um, lighter. But that in summary is kind of my process. That's a painting. lot of layers. That's really cool. Um, <laughs> Thank you. That's great. Cool. So um, I, I know you said you've only been painting for a few years. Um, what kind of made mm -hmm. you get started painting? How did you kind of get into art like that? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, I like I, I mentioned this a little bit ago, but I sketched a lot and I just made graphite drawings over the years. But um, in college, I was getting back into creating after taking about a two year break. And so what really drew me to starting to create again was not only the environment I was in, but also um, the art school. I went to University of Michigan. And so, uh, you know, I saw that there were some painting courses that were available. So I signed up for two foundational courses in oil painting. And that's what really got me started. I used those courses to kind of build my foundation and kind of understand how to use those colors and how to because anyone, anyone who has had experience in oil paint knows it's like, or I mean, you don't even need experience. It's just very different from acrylic and watercolor. So I think, you know, those two semesters really helped me hone and kind of understand like, or hone my skill and understand, you know, this is how oil painting works. And then um, from there, after I graduated, I just kind of did my own thing with it. All right. Um, you said you went to UMiss again. Um, what brought you to Boston? That's a good question too. <laughs> I've been saying that, but honestly, all your questions have been really good. Um, what brought me here? So although I really do enjoy painting, it's actually not my full-time 
you know, job or anything. I actually work as a UX designer. So um, I grew up in a small town in Michigan and I really wanted to change things up with, you know, where I'd be working full time. And so I, I was really interested in moving either to Boston or Chicago. I wanted kind of a change of pace. And so um, from the openings that I applied at, I really liked what um, I had for this job offer in Boston. And so I ultimately decided to move here. And that was about, it was a little over two years ago. So hmm. I work full time as a designer, but I still do love painting in my free time. Oh, cool. So you work as a designer for your real job. Um, how does that kind of design translate to design in your paintings and in your artwork? Mm -hmm. So I think in one way, you know, I spend such a big chunk of my day kind of designing for users, focusing on other people, trying to solve their problems and really like enjoying that kind of space. But then uh, I think that makes the separation easier because then after work, it's kind of like, what am I creating and making for myself? You know, it's like those questions that I'm asking others in my day job. It, I kind of turn that back around to me. Like, what am I creating? What does this mean for me? Um, I think another way where that design influences my work is um, there's, there's a similar process for UX or product design. There's a whole research phase and a design phase and a phase, you know, sometimes, in, you know, throughout the whole process where you get feedback from your product managers or engineers. And I feel like painting can be very similar to that in some ways where researching your, you know, visiting museums, seeing other artists work, trying to explore different mediums, you're actually making the piece through different iterations, you know, the first sketch isn't going to be the best one a lot of times, and then getting feedback by, you know, other artists through a critique. So I think off the top of my head, those are two ways where uh, design really influences my creative uh, side of painting. Nice. All right. Um, cool. So what inspires and motivates you to make art? There's like a lot of people, there's a different things that really inspire and motivate me. Um, but I, I have to say, you know, quite obviously, like just, just other artists, seeing their work, um, seeing their narrative with their work and where they're going. And so a few artists that really inspire me, like have, you know, been a constant source of inspiration lately. Um, there is another, there's an oil painter by the name of Salman Tour, and he does a great job of depicting, well, he's not, he's not so much um, a portrait painter, but he does these really environmental paintings of having different characters, setting the mood, setting the scenery. And when you look at his body of work, it can really, uh, get, you know, you can really get a certain kind of message that he's trying to put out there. And I think, you know, that's just one of so many artists who inspire me because I see his work um, and it pushes me to keep creating until I get to a point where my body of work can start to have that storytelling element. Because right now, um, I'd say a lot of my pieces definitely have that, but there are some pieces that you know, I'm, I feel like I'm still exploring a lot. So there are some pieces where it's like, okay, I mean, this does it really have a message or anything, but hey, I'm just trying to work with these colors and it works, so. Cool, and yeah. what message do you want viewers to see? Like when they, if someone sees your work, what what kind of message do you want that to send to someone? Mm -hmm. I think um, the message that I want to send to someone, this is still, I'm definitely still thinking on this, so I'm not gonna have like a super solid answer, but I think the direction I wanna go in um, I want to focus a little more on self portraits and kind of first seeing, you know, what is this message for me? What am I kind of creating when I'm making a self portrait? How does that, um, you know, what effect does that have on me? What thoughts do I have when I'm creating that? And then um, when I feel like I have that more fleshed out, you know, having that conversation with myself with my self portraits, I want um, maybe for that to be open to interpretation. You know, um, that's cool. So it's kind yeah, of about yeah. the process of painting and kind of finding out things about yourself while you mm -hmm. make painting. Cool. It's almost like therapeutic. That's awesome. <laughs> Definitely is. Yeah, I agree with that <laughs> for myself. Um, have you been influenced by any like movements in art history or what's your favorite? <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's definitely a lot and I still have a lot of learning to do, but I will say um, miniature paintings, especially Mughal miniature paintings are 
um, something that really, I think at this point, they really inspire me. And I've been able to translate that into a few of my pieces. I think even like that cover photo for, you know, the Arts District Boston interview with Komel, um, that painting I have in the background, that is definitely influenced by Mughal miniature uh, mm. paintings. And I think what really stands out to me about those paintings is um, kind of the color choices that the artists have used, uh, just the intricacy. There's just so many details and designs and it's all so beautiful. So it's like, you know, okay, I made a portrait, but how can I push that further? How can I make that more interesting to look at, not just for myself, but for others? And so, um, you know, that has been a big source of inspiration too. And that's, you know, a type of uh, painting or art form that I'm really interested in. That's dope. Um, so I know <laughs> the first time I saw your paintings, I realized that they're so much um, smaller than I would have expected. Does that kind of come from that? Uh, and I know you have gold leaf in the, mm -hmm. can, you, can you explain to us what Mughal miniature paintings <laughs> is? Because I think, you know, some people might be lost. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So Mughal miniature paintings, um, they, just like how it sounds like they're miniature paintings, um, a lot of times they are part of books and sometimes they're standalone pieces, but uh, the name Mughal comes from the fact that a lot of these miniature paintings, they exist outside of the Mughal era, but a lot of these pieces were created um, during the time of the Mughal Empire in South Asia from around the 16th to 18th centuries. So um, yeah, yeah, there's miniature paintings that existed before and after and each I think Empire kind of era brought its own little taste to it, but Mughal miniature paintings are definitely what has interested me. And I know you mentioned um, gold leaf and them being small. So mm -hmm. me incorporating gold leaf into my work, that's definitely a result of, you know, studying miniature paintings. I love how it's kind of embellished the pieces, but not overpowering it. It's just, it just enhances the piece basically. And I'm actually currently trying to find that balance you know like um i think yeah arts district boss had shared a piece that had like a girl i painted with gold yeah. leaf hair so i was experimenting there it was a lot but you know i was like okay let's try this and then again with the piece in the flyer um there's a few parts where there's gold leaf but um paintings themselves you know them being kind of small i actually didn't uh get the idea from miniature paintings it actually was <laughs> It actually was out of convenience, um, just because, uh, like in Boston, I've been moving to different apartments, I'll visit immediate family in Michigan, so I've just been moving a lot, and for me, it's just easier to finish, like, you know, an 8 by 10 painting versus that's something like 24 by 36 or even bigger, I think. It's just, it's just been really feasible for the kind of lifestyle I have right now. That's great. Yeah. And there's so much detail that goes into those tiny little paintings. It's amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Also with your gold leaf, you know, I looked at it, I was like, wow, this is beautiful. And then I kind of had to do a <laughs> double take because I was like, whoa, that's made of gold leaf. It's, it's a surprise. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. It's definitely tricky taking pictures of it and making it still look like gold leaf. Cause in real life, I mean, you can just move around and see like, oh, this is definitely not just oil paint, but I'm glad my pictures, you know, it came off as gold paint or yeah. uh, sorry, gold paint. Really, cool. <laughs> really cool. So what, um, where do you plan on going in the future with your painting? Mm -hmm. um, so I did mention like painting more self portraits, but definitely not, I don't want to limit myself to that. I think what I really want to do, I mean, that's a part of it, but also just improve with self portraits and um, the kind of colors I'm using right now. I think for the past like four or five months, I've been painting with a really limited palette. It's just burnt umber, titanium white, ultramarine blue, uh, cad red medium, and cad yellow medium. And that's for me to get really the skin tone down and just get the colors down and focus more on the concept. But at some point, you know, in the future, I'd love to expand that limited palette and um, really, uh, you know, use colors um, strategically instead of, you know, being overwhelmed and stuff. So I'd love to uh, enhance that, but also uh, just different inspirations that I've mentioned and even more, I want to find ways to incorporate um, that into my works. And then um, also, sorry, there's like so many parts of this <laughs> answer. <Awesome. laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Um, also, I mentioned Salman Tour, his body of work. There's such a strong like storytelling element. I think I'd love to have that at some point because um, yeah, I think my portraits, it's like, oh, you know, who's that person or, oh, this has been done well. But if I could get that extra layer of, you know, that would make the viewer think like in the painting, you know, what is this person trying to do? Like, what is, you know, where are they 
just I just I just want my work to make the viewer very curious. Uh, yeah. So I think those are a few different directions that I'm thinking of. Cool. And um, I know you paint friends and family. Is there like a certain type of subjects you like to pick or how do you kind of decide who you want to paint? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's, uh, <laughs> that's really good. Uh, that's a good question. So I think like, I do gravitate towards painting women of color. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a lot of friends that are women of color. And it's been just really nice to reach out to them and be like, you know, is it cool if I paint you or is it and then everyone is always super happy for that. Yeah, to happen. I so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that. So um yeah, I think like that is my first where I'm kind of thinking of where I want to go, who I paint. But then when it comes to family, I'd say just people that I really love or really inspired by. So um, really easily, like I can use both of my brothers as references. They're my younger brothers. I love them. We're really good friends. So I'll paint them often. But my maternal grandmother is alive and well, and she's a strong source of inspiration. She's a really strong woman. So I think it's like my third most recent post. I painted a picture of her when she was really young. And I guess, you know, um, it's it's an emotional connection. It's an emotional connection. And then making sure I'm diversifying um, oil paintings, especially because, you know, you go to museums and you see so many oil paintings of, you know, white men in history. But oh, I'd yeah. love to just kind of dis diversify that. So I think that's, that's cool. uh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I appreciate that a lot. All right, so what are you working on now? Do you have any projects coming up? <laughs> um, yeah, so I actually have a self-portrait in the works. I'm talking and I'm just looking over and there's like this big canvas that I've prepped with gesso and acrylic. I haven't done anything to it yet, but I think I really want to embody just like the past year and just being in quarantine. So I think it'll be a really simple self-portrait just because I haven't I haven't painted in a few weeks, so I think um, I think just a simple self-portrait of me just sitting on the floor or something. Honestly, like I <laughs> I want to I want to start back up with something very simple before I start, you know, adding in all these like influences or elements or something. But mm -hmm. I'm pushing myself a little again because my latest pieces, my last few ones were eight by ten, and this mm -hmm. one I think is um, twenty four by thirty six. So I oh, want to wow. start pushing myself to make bigger pieces. So that's something that's in the works right now. Nice. All right, great. And let's open up the floor to questions. Thanks so much, Komal. You've been so awesome. <laughs> no problem. No, thanks for asking such good questions. I learned it's so, so much, much answering them. <laughs> Yay. Um, all right. I thought it would be a simple self-portrait because we've all been stuck in the house. <laughs> Question. It's true. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm the one person that I get to look at every day. So it's like, might as well. <laughs> it's a good point. That's true. By yourself. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, thanks so much. Um, I'll be posting this and you can share it wherever you want. Um, Sounds good. Thanks again for having me. It was really nice to talk to you and just have, you know, people hear about my art. So I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, Thank keep you. making artwork. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> Will do. All right. Bye. Thank Have you. Bye, you too.